Good day, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the channel Then and Now, me now on our host and presenter, Prince Emil Kroma. Today, we are about to do a great uh, presentation. We are about to talk to somebody of eminence, of stature, a stakeholder in our society. When we talk about the Coalition for National Election Watch, we they talk about the executive director for Campaign for Good Governance. This person no need much introduction as he, she is already well known within the social, political and economic circles, both abroad and our country. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about Mrs. Marcella Samba Sisse. Mrs. Marcella Samba Sisse, welcome to the program then and now. Thanks so much and thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to speak on issues such as this. Thank you very much. Um, just to start with, I want to go straight to the point. I want to ask you what parameters, you know, a civil society can use for measure good governance? Oh, thank you very much. Um, civil societies such as Campaign for Good Governance and National Elections Watch, I can say not to just the normal civil society. We, we don't establish beyond civil society. We're actually a think tank for Sierra Leone because the number of people, they wonder how we're able to pull up issues around democratic principles and practices. And that is exactly what it is. For let democratic processes unfold, you get to understand just like what you say, waiting at the parameters. Waiting at the basic guidelines and principles we guide democratic processes. And one of such, and in fact, now the basis, now the rule of law. So the legal framework, what in the law say? What in democracy say? What in the prescription? It just sounds like when you get diagnosis and you're not a doctor. After you don't diagnose the problem, there are certain prescriptions you give. So you therefore understand, first and foremost, who's kind of context we did. So like for winner campaign for good governance, we want for contribute, for example, to what we for do in what we call a post-conflict society. When you want for build democracy in a post-conflict society, there are certain attributes. And within the attributes, they go for what are within the framework of the law. Certain things and they will go up on other societies, other democracies. In fact, Senegal, although not French speaking West Africa, they just get the elections last week. But we are yang yang, we not hearing nothing, no chamots. I mean, the sub region, there was no tension. Within that same period, the Nigeria gets the elections. Nigeria elections, there were issues, they had logistical challenges, they therefore postponed the elections. So basically the point what they make is that various countries in, in West Africa, they at varying points in the democratic transition. So for winners Sierra Leone, after 2002, we are actually a post-conflict society. So you go for watch, waiting at the ingredients for gear and taste, waiting exactly a post-conflict society need. And political scientists then believe same. A society where don't come up and conflict, where they don't fight war, it's easy for slide back to war. And so, it's a give and take situation. You pull small, then you push small. You draw the political leaders, then can't say, can you can engage, then you push small. Because many a times you get to remind them, when you become too familiar, they relax. When you hit the country and say, hey, so what you exactly now want to do? So that's the approach we are taking. So you get to understand the fundamental principles and then you get to guide the leadership for understand. Because in 1996, the organization where me, where me they had right now campaign for good governance, and they're using that to make an informal. Sierra Leone experienced military rule. Sierra Leone experienced one party rule. In 1996, we want to try with democratic practices. Can we have an organization to help guard the process? That was why Campaign for Good Governance was established. It was established as a watchdog institution for democracy. So that's exactly what we're doing. So are we actually portraying the tenets and practices of a democracy? Now some of the questions and I know they use to enter will get the process. 
So what do we do? We do research. We do civic education. Because one attribute of a good democracy in an informed citizen. You know, you find out, say, especially in the last elections, the 2018 elections, a lot of propaganda been the goal. Some people even confused. They say, we don't understand what really they go on. But then, informed citizenry, you go for kids and the kind of education where they need for let them support democracy. Citizens then go for be empowered enough for all governments for account. For all governments to account, not to a negative principle. Now, a fundamental democratic practice. Absolutely. If we send you for go do something, because the citizens now they get the power. If now we say waiting, uh, um, Ginger Kuso called the social contract. He said at some point we need for hand over the power. We left them in safe care of certain people. Then, then after a while, then for come back. If we don't give you something for all for me, you don't all on five years. It is but fitting for come back and can't tell where you manage them. Which exactly moves me to my next question, and I really appreciate that. But before I develop the next question. I just want to say thanks for the way you articulate exactly what most people don't come for know you for because um, you don't take time for explain exactly let people understand where you are where good governance is and the rest of it that's an explanation that most people you know here will tend to agree with but you mentioned something about social contract that would be between um, them and us us and them vis-a-vis -vis either way so when them we and come back to the people it bring about some kind of a change change of government if you like mm -hmm. if i suppose say in the direction that they even go so now there is a new um, government in town after they're not express you know yeah then civic after people are expressed their civic um, um, obligations yeah, sure. okay so i asked about the parameters and you mentioned them you know how they have been used now as we speak um, um uh, mrs um, marcella sambasi say how would you measure then as opposed to now within a relationship then in terms of civil society work and within a in now well as i mentioned earlier on um we we work as civil society nobody no get for disturbance change of government no get for disturbance nothing no get for change because it's the same framework that we work with we look at political leadership. When I say leadership, it cuts across the board, not just the presidency, but equally so how the executive they operate, how the, the parliament they operate, and how the judiciary they operate. Can't down to public servants and the civil service and all. So all other day within the governance system and structure. Once do we understand the parameters with which we operate no political leadership no get for change change of government not the affects the work we campaign for good governance to do because one we they we, we, we vision i mean like you always tell me team say we vision big past we the vision i foresee a better sierra leone Usai we go live a people-centered life you know poverty quote unquote now a disgrace we, 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 we have been reduced to a begging nation yep. and most people look at Sierra Leone it's like a paradox because if even the South South we sit on they do this interview I tell you the value where we natural resources get but it's also a governance question how we don't manage them for let like, benefit the ordinary citizens so we can always ask questions, irrespective of who they are power. Now, so campaign for good governance as an entity continue for be articulate as we will be during the APC regime, and we are also very much articulate during the, the SLPP regime. We want to see a Sierra Leonean government that is responsive to the needs of the people. A number of things do happen we really not good for with democracy quite recently namely the events the way they happen at parliament one thing we're going to realize you know parliament is not the center of democratic practice absolutely it now a small representation of the society because each and every one of we where they across the alone 
return in one parliamentarian for represent with constituency so it's, a, it's it's just a picture what you with my call a microcosm of what they happen at the country now they in a parliament because they represent varying interests varying uh, um, regions and varying districts now if the parliament's not able for coexist if they're not able for discuss issues and come to an amicable settlement we will find and difficult because now they get for make laws laws will go affect the lives of citizens i don't see any reason why make parliament not for able to get consensus around because the, the the very issues whether you are an apc mp or you are an slpp mp depending of on whose constituency you represent or whether you are an ngc person yep. or a C for C parliamentarian. When you go to the market, nobody you know they go ask you. They give you identity before I sell one corporate skill. Absolutely. So the issues affect every Sierra Leonean across the board, and our representatives in parliament for able for articulate their issues today in the best interest of the state. But unfortunately, the parliamentarians are not able to see eye to eye, and the tension, the growing tension. Now parliament, it will get a rippling effect on the development because now they get for doing the policies and the laws where we get for using to for translate and implement for better we lives. And this is exactly again where I want for bought in. Th thanks again for that. And um, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are watching, I they talk to somebody who is not known for sitting on the fence, who is known for saying it straight and she's saying it exactly as it is. Earlier on, you mentioned about um, the politics, the nature of politics now with country. You talk about, um, generally, we are talking about good governance. We mean, you know, yeah, like social, economic, and political exactly. cohesion, and nation building, and the rest of it. And when you mention about parliament, the reason we make, you know, yeah, I try for interject is it sounds like things are not going the way that they are supposed to go in terms of nation building. If this is the case, it's not, you know, yeah, in um, theoretically, parliament is supposed to be the house of the people and the big house, if yeah. you like, and it's not going the way how we will choose the people for go in there. What then, if this is the case, what then can be done? How do we form something about, you know, yeah, for go forward away from a pathway not supposed for be? You know, I think say the leadership, when I said the leadership, the presidency, the executive, get for take up the challenge. Okay. Then get for take up the challenge for broker peace. You know, quite recently, um, from the office of the president, then get waiting and call the green paper where they lay out a peace plan because these are some of the things we've been calling for. We we had a very contentious election. Yep. Say what you may. It was an election where the current president in the posting of His Excellency and his Baikoma was no longer contesting. But his party was contesting. Absolutely. It was no longer contesting because he served his two term. So that gave uh, um, room for let we get two people them when not in at the presidency. In other countries, for example, if the, the incumbent is running for a second term, it can be um of less tension yep. you know the power of the incumbency and everything can come inside but then this were two people who were not in the political seats and then so it creates a lot of problems across but in fact now that makes the coalition when we the head we stand up for this country and say in a situation like this where everybody thinks say we want for win the election we have to have an independent body yep. to say that this is what we saw and this is what it is. Do we have that independent body? That's is what there we anything did in as the National Elections Watch. Okay. That's what we did during the elections. A civil society across the country, we deployed 12,000 observers. And then we did what is called the parallel vote stabilization. This is a blueprint for civil society in electoral processes where well, they give rapid and real-time information from the field on electoral Did results. that bear fruit? I mean, it, it was Yeah, it did. It did, okay. because it contributed enormously to post-election peace. Okay. Now, it was a situation where we were able to say, this is what it is, this is what we saw, and in the first round of elections, we saw that nobody was winning the elections. It was actually a runoff, and we said that. So that contributed. People believed us, and they said, yes, 
and when the electoral commission came with the results it resonated so it was good that we came out and came out very strongly to the good of the nation so we broke out peace in that front so it, now the president has to take up that challenge further you know they say you were where the the, the on his lies the head that wears the crown absolutely so now i get for now the party where they power now i get for yeah. the owners, uh, now they get for understand say inside the sierra leone constitution say nine at the fountain of honor absolutely it means say anything i get for take responsibility and so quite recently there was a positive move the president after a series of calls you know there in the in the electoral act for example for the appointment of an electoral commission i go for consult with the other parties the other parties i mean there was no consultation done in one of the appointments for an electoral commissioner of for the south yep. but recently he called all those people all the political parties to come together and to talk about it and also there is this issue of sexual offenses especially yep. against minors there is a state of emergency that the president uh, 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 um, puts forward and then he called them and explained waiting at the rationale behind this so the point is if we wait and take this state of emergency going to parliament from us women we are so sick and tired of this issue of abuse of minors right? yeah but of uh, young mrs children. mrs samba on the basis of law legally speaking mm -hmm. and of course you represent one um where they try for make sure say things go right yes. when they go to parliament um even though the issue is a burning issue but because of suspicions we go back again to the That's basis the of point. yeah exactly the other side world. yes the other side no agree exactly. the other side they see and like say this instrument where they try for introduce it's, pol it's, 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 it's politically it's, motivated yes, exactly yeah. where does campaign for good governance stand on that issues is of it. this nature so the whole issue is even though we will be having an opposing sides because it's about the opposition it will be about the ruling party versus the opposition now even though they sit at the opposition side but i believe say each of them gets a singular objective and that singular objective now for see a better sierra leone we don't want to see a sierra leone where before we get picking the rich puberty they have all been tampered Absolutely. with so some action need for be taken I think say now from that position, neither for able to sit a reason from both sides. Yep. And probably now you say this thing not meets the state of emergency situation where the, the president puts forward. So as parliament, what would you advise? You know, some of we even they call now for let them review the sexual offenses law because then they will help in the long term for shape this process and for put more stringent provisions that are loaded for address the problem. So there is a whole lot of things where we can do as a country if we ease together. And that's Absolutely. democracy mean. Absolutely. It means consultation. Yeah. It means empowerment. It means inclusion. We not go say because then people are not in a power. This winner takes all system now we country. It they affect this country. It they affect democracy. It they affect peaceful coexistence. When um the, the southeasterners where SPP win election the southeasterners think now they're no more for dinner power yeah. where APC win the northwesterners they think now they're no more for dinner power it is affecting the real social fabric of the nation we don't want that kind of thing for happen we don't want and um, having to do something about it are two different things if you understand what they try for say mm -hmm. And I know say you campaign for good governance, they try for put measures into place or make sure say there is um, some degree of good governance. Yes. And this is now one thing. Are you equally doing something that these kind things the way they happen? Like how you articulate and so when Northeasterners then take over, it's uh, all about Northeasterners or simply put, you know, yeah, winner takes it all. Are you doing actively doing something, you know, here to quell this, to stop this, to stifle this, that it doesn't happen in our nation because you're not really the helpers? In fact, I am on a campaign. If I choose to spend time for talk to you on your evolution right now, it's because I, we are on a campaign. A campaign with voice for reach out to the minds and hearts of Sierra Leoneans, 
for do that sort of civic education will give you enlightenment and consciousness as to what we can do and how we can able embrace democracy as the good standard we will help with country so that's what we do we talk about this in the media we talk about this in public for us we do town hall meetings to do citizens education it takes time though but a lot of people don't get to understand that wait till we do so is stand for destroy we are supposed for to bring with uh, for bring with together so it's important it's important that we continue with the engagement the education and all it's very very useful i think say it will be good for the government see the need for consult a lot more government see the need for engage a lot more i mean for be overtly politically partisan not the app in no way because sierra leone na na a society where everybody connected say what you may it's a very small society we are connected by intermarriages we go to the same church we worship in the same mosque there is so much interlinkage not so a big society where gets 200 million people like Nigeria or 10 million uh, 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 people like other countries or 30 million like Ghana. This is just 7 million people. We are connected in several ways. We stand for gain if we are united and we stand for lose a lot if we are disconnected. And at that disconnect, we know they, we know what for let happen. But we for try for do. We for try for ensure say we bring the basic of facilities governments for be responsive to the needs of the people clean and safe drinking water electricity basic health care education when we don't done with them basic four parameters they will begin for examine how do we build housing facilities so that people then will left this slum culture we talk quite about social recently housing. exactly okay. quite recently one of the biggest slum in the world where we host in a free tongue in the capital city when a bay fire broke out say, a couple of days ago about 500 households affected Wow. Do we want to continue in this situation? How, what's in our government in plan? You know, work with the, the city council. So you see, all the intention them, uh, APC council, uh, SF, it's, it's <laughs> not helping. Yeah. How does central government work with the local council, which is the federal city council, for put forward a plan? Governments here in here out, they have not paid attention to that place because they say we no want for displace them, we no want for lay we lost foot, we no want for pull together then a batch of streets, we no want for lost foot. If we continue in that overtly political lens, we will not do anything. But what do we do? We sit with the people, we consult with them, we put forward it a plan for them let them understand the plan let them see how much they could benefit from a healthy living and healthy lifestyle with that plan and let them buy into it and see how we can foster we have to have a national transformation focus absolutely we're not to one government account with your two three year activity if we have an activity-led government that doesn't bring development it has to be a 25 year plan and we want for work towards some other countries have done so yep. we cannot be going through this kind of stagnated development it's very frustrating may know a lot of Sierra Leoneans from abroad we want for relocate but you know the basic living condition not able for day and then no one for day in that kind of society can we talk to our governments can we talk to our leaders that it is not business as usual it is a situation where they are coming to serve me go clap for any president i go clap for any president publicly we go open in doors to consultation and see how we can chat the way forward for for make sure say sierra leone be a better place we get all what it takes for transforming the medium term yeah we have natural resources yep. we have a young and youthful population absolutely we have women in fact that one and nine are the most important how do we integrate women folks into our processes and empower them so that they go with them were able to contribute meaningfully to development how do we ensure women's political representation any leader 
when one foresee in country better. Let, let, let's look at uh, uh, um, Rwanda. You know, Kigami might have his own issues. Of course, every leader Every does. leader yeah. gets in your yeah. issue. But Rwanda went through a cycle similar to Sierra Leone. They had, I mean, the level of violence in Rwanda, it, it was the consuming quality was on Adolf. The, the, the genocide, it be really, really boring. But what it happen? Then get this leadership where things say we can make this country. And it thinks that every person for himself. It brought women. In fact, women are the highest in terms of representation in the parliament and correct. other spaces. But that could be attributed you to know? the fact that many men lost their lives in the population. Well, now, then, did, you see women. one thing about this patriarchy, <laughs> they would always give justification. But there are men anyway. No, it's a good initiative, by it's the way. I was, I was just saying, That's uh, yeah. what we want to see. Yeah. It's, it's the same kind of argument they give. <clears throat> when you ask about women to sit on the table and discuss, yep. by the way, tomorrow is International Women's Day, 8th of March, and I want to use this opportunity Absolutely. worldwide. We, we, we will come, we will come to, to that, to Marcella. I will, defi this. I will definitely <laughs> give you, you know, yeah, the chance yes. you know, yeah, to highlight so that you know, yeah, to the people. But let me move <clears> to something else which um, you wanted to develop um, some different arguments away from the International Women's Day yes. because you definitely will be giving chance you to, know, talk, to talk about, about. Yeah. So I want to talk about, I'm still talking about the, the Rwanda issue. Okay. So people will still talk about, oh, where are the women, for example, to take up political leadership, they are there. Yep. They will say, oh, this woman cannot sit on the table because she's not educated, but men have been sitting around the table and they are uneducated. But it's about what the woman can bring to the space and yeah. how to include that. That's the discussion. It's very important. What I'm saying is that if we try as best as possible as a country, you know, because leaders forget so easily. When they want power, they have all, they understand all the discussions. They understand all the rhetorics around good governance. But when they take power, they forget so easily. Forgetting that it's just five years. Yep. Or if you are fortunate, you go for a second term. Yep. And then after that, that's it. You come back to the society. Yep. You come back to the society where there is no water. You come back to the society <laughs> when the la where the electricity is shaky. You come back to the you come back to the society and you sit back devoid of all the basic amenities you know that could have been yeah for the people so we don't want to be going through that vicious yeah. cycle Marcella, um, because of time constraint let me move on to something else which <laughs> most people think is um, actually controversial and that's the issue of um, the commission of inquiry to which you've spoken again by virtue of your position and your in you being a stakeholder um, you believe that the instruments, and write me if I'm wrong, please. You believe that the <coughs> instruments or the way they went about the process was questionable. And I think you've spoken on national and international media as part of the process and even ask whether there's a possibility or whether it could be revisited. Or probably you were speaking from the um, point of view in terms of um, national cohesion, which I believe is very important to you, nation building. So, would you, for the audience, please clarify what was your position on in terms of the instruments and the, <coughs> you know, yeah, the follow-up. So, please. very br briefly, this whole idea of a commission of inquiry stems from the fact um, that there were issues of um, corruption within the state, and this needs to be clarified. Um, issues around the Ebola and all of that, it needs to be clarified. I mean, so. The point was that we have had a very challenging period. The elections had been very contentious. Any process that would bring further separation or dent into the national cohesion process was the problem. That was our premise. Now, how can this be done? We said that it needs to be done fairly, it needs to be done transparently, it needs to be done according to the prescription of the law. As long as it is done in a fair and transparent manner and communicated in a way that people will understand that the essence is to heal the country. Because say what you may, we do not want a process where leaders will come and then 
at the end of the day nothing happens it's yeah. just a vicious cycle yeah. so it's good that we understand if there is rampant corruption in the state where is it happening or did it happen at all or if it happened where for example and what's the trends are what the patterns are so the commission of inquiry will be able to unfold all of this and i think so far the the foreign judges have been doing a good job they have made the space very open and transparent that was exactly what we are calling for because it got to a point when it becomes so contentious there were demonstrations and we never wanted that yeah but at it sit now they don't tamper down a little bit and people they go they go get the um, investigation and they go on people and they go on at the commission they go testify and people tend to be following the process with acceptance which is good yeah okay um so if we if i do understand this well the position of the campaign for good governance is just to ensure that everything go in accordance with, with the, law. the law exactly basically. yeah so that people do not use legal processes to their own satisfaction absolutely that you take you, you you are happy for a particular law when it's in your favor but when it's not in your favor you are against it no that's not the way to fight corruption that's not the way to handle the rule of law the rule of law is the same at all times all right um ladies and gentlemen once again um i am speaking to um the executive director for the campaign for good governance mrs marcella samba Sise, and um, we they talk today in freetown and she spoke earlier on about the beauty of um, the country the asset where the country gets we supposed to make we all get along fine and within at the beach front now and as i speak to you hopefully we shall see the view in this and i want to say thank you to marcella i get one or two questions and we're going to round up this interview which brings me exactly marcella to um measurement if you like obviously you were around during the last government and you're around most people will say during the early part of this new government but i talk about something like measurement in terms of good governance where you're a champion if we were to do a comparable analysis it, it sound a little bit unfair but that can be done in terms of measurement how cooperative how much of a relationship where you know they look for but for carry on your duty was the last um, um, government as opposed to even 10 11 months of this new government and how optimistic are you as to the side where you <coughs> think you want for head are we heading so you see the space for participation one of the things we make you say fortunately we enjoy the space for participation as campaign for good governance we are one of the civil society outfits we non-political arrangements not a make to change at all so people know the stance we will take and that's enough we include we for do we work we they continue for do we work in the best interest of the country i think say comparatively for say this government better pass this or that day it's too early for make them kind of prescription and day and i don't think say it's a it's even a good way for measure democracy because different leaders have their own style of arrangement some people are open but what we want for encourage that every government be a lot more open and transparent if the country is having challenges make we know say challenges then they whatever contributions we can give in terms of information in terms of education in terms of knowledge we will do but not you know in there with space we have the space to operate and one thing we i want for say the challenge where this government for look at and therefore look at the decisions the way that they take for example this issue of the the um, NGO policy, we then call the Development Cooperation Framework, we get the tendency for close the space, although they don't create an opportunity for look at them and talk about them a lot more, less some of them policy than they know they did. Because civil society contribution is very pertinent. What we need to do is to open the space more yep. for more critical views and ideas because not only they empower government, the, the journalists are also calling to remove but five of uh, uh, um, when they talk about seditious libel for remove them from the 1965 public order act may not in our law books yeah but the government All promised this, that they will be doing that they yes they, they made that yeah. commitment okay. but will not see it okay so i just said anything there and they i need boost for more yeah. um freedom of expression freedom of association and citizens were able for participate 
two or three quick questions just before we land in one go. How optimistic are you in terms of the job where you do? I mean, um, the results gain. Yeah, how far we don't come, how far we are, how far we go. They come back to the same optimism. Um, secondly, um, waiting at your message for them one and we they in the diaspora because this message basically although the local or domestic audience get for consumer but it's mostly going to the one that waiting at the diaspora what are your expectations you know yeah in terms of participatory democracy for help in terms of um, your good governance initiative for the diasporans then what can they do and then finally marcella um just before i hear the final questions congratulations again very strong woman and um keep up the good work but i will give you the chance for just flow in terms of um international day for the women okay so my optimism is big because personally and as an organization i run with the organization's vision we optimism so big we want for see we get this vision of a dream sierra leone and at that one day they keep we going every now and then and we get this vision say we can make them and we get a critical of mass a following you know it will amaze you for no say people then can just call up say i stop by my office for tell not thank you for which one do and they show say we get a critical mass of people who support this vision in fact for so let you can't say if you're able for trace me and say i need an interview with you for me audience the amount of sierra leone she said there are sierra leoneans also in the diaspora who are interested in this vision yep you know, to seek a better Sierra Leone. Now that day now in our own driving for so we are optimistic who will get there. And we are happy for me say we are the part of a team where they contribute to this vision of the Sierra Leone we want to see. Yep. And also we want for see more women taking active part. We want to see more women in the boardroom. We want for see as we move into international women's day when eighth of March we say balance for better. We want for see a better Sierra Leone, but this better Sierra Leone not for just go with male only phases. It has to go with women phases as well. Yeah, on the International Women's Day, ladies and gentlemen, um, again, um, Mrs. Marcella Sambasi say we just uh, wrap up this interview, and um, tomorrow is International um, Women's Day, and Marcella, as a very strong woman, a stakeholder, again, I the emphasize you the emphasis is mine. But a strong woman been just to talk again about um, the International Day of the Women and they make a special appeal to um, the women, both domestically, I mean, here in Freetown, Sierra Leone, and the world over. It's been a fantastic run and a fantastic interview, if you will like. Marcella, I want to use this opportunity again for say thank you so much. And please continue for do your good work where you do. And I really appreciate it. And I will convey this message to the rest of um, we Sierra Leonean and compatriots and where they are sure. and we international friends and partners. Okay. Thank you so much for the and interview. And thank you for having me on your program. Yeah. Thank you very much, my dear. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. Perfect.